Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We are here at the York Hall Bethnal Green Fisher Babbage Way in. That was exciting. Yeah, it's going to be wild tomorrow night, honestly. I mean, listen, I love Alan Babbage. I mean, one, I love watching him fight. And two, I think he's just a proper old school hard bastard. And he's so entertaining as well. And he's played the perfect part. Let's see if he can play the perfect part tomorrow. It's going to be an incredible atmosphere. You've got a little taste of it down here. I mean, you know, this is probably a fight that without Johnny's support would be in your court. Packed, sold out. We're in the Copper Bosch. Already 6,000. I'm hoping a good walk-up gets close to 7,000 tomorrow. It's unbelievable scenes. It's going to be wild. And by the way, although it's a next-gen event, really, the undercard's really, really good. John Edges is in a great fight. Maisie Rose Courtney's in a great fight. Reese Bellotti against Levi Giles, I promise you. Fight of the year contender written all over it. Laley Butterjig, Jimmy Sainz, Giorgio Vizioli, Louis Pacchetti. Great night. Tomorrow's going to be one of those great days, honestly. We're going to wake up. We're going to get ourselves down to the Copper Bosch for a 5K run, right? The fight day 5K. Everybody who is from East London, from London, do yourself a favour. Tomorrow is going to be one of those historic nights, right? England in the quarterfinals against Switzerland. We win that, we're in the semis. These are one of those special days, you know, like the Euros, the World Cups, those days you remember. Do yourself a favour and get yourself down to the Copper Box for 9.45 a.m., we do a fight day 5K every Saturday. You can run, I'm going to run it super slow tomorrow. If you're a fast runner, you can run it fast. There's boxing clubs, there's kids, there's old people like me. It is an unbelievable way to start a legendary day. So do that first of all. Then we're going to go back, we're going to shower up. Joe, we might have a couple of little cheeky halves or for you, pints with tequila on a side or whatever it is you fucking youngsters drink these days and then we're going to get to the copper bosch we're going to get there when the doors open at 4 30 right the first fight's at 4 40 it's going to finish at 5 p.m which is bang on the start time for england against switzerland we are going to sit there in a copper bosch and we're going to have such a laugh such a great time such an incredible atmosphere with fights at half time and then once we've spanked Switzerland, we're going to go into the main card. It's going to be such a great night of boxing. And we're going to finish it off with Alan Babich against Johnny Fisher in that most wild, wild atmosphere in what will be a wild heavyweight fight. So tomorrow, what a day to be alive. What a day to be alive. It is going to be brilliant. And just to think, what, there was probably about 60 Johnny Fisher fans over there. Times that by 50. I would have, I would have said 600. But, you know, yeah. That's the promoter in you. Yeah, but you. times that by 50, yeah. and that's what you're going to get tomorrow. And that took the noise at the roof off this. This is, this is a kind of venue that would host a fight like this for a, for a young, you know, sort of heavyweight prospect on the start of his journey. But he's so lucky to have this support. And if you heard in there tonight, you, you're quite right. You know, times that by whatever it's going to be, 50 tomorrow night. And it's going to be absolutely carnage in the Copper Bush. Are you ever going to do a show here? We haven't done a show here for about six years or something. We, we spoke about it earlier. I mean, the shows have changed. Do you know what I mean? Like, firstly, the numbers of people coming to shows have, have got a lot bigger, but the production values, the way everything looks has changed a lot. But there's something very special about this place. So I kind of made a decision a few years ago that we needed to move away from venues like this. But there's nothing like a night at York Hall. So... I think if we do a smaller show, like a next gen or something like that, this can still be a great home. And uh, plus you get the added bonus of the salt beef bagel after with the piping hot mustard that gets right up your hooter. Bosh. All right, Babich. Um, yeah. you know fucking head microphones. <laughs> Babich, Chisora, I don't know which one. Got to ask you about Ryan Garcia. Obviously, wild yeah. events happening Last night, yeah, just get your thoughts on it. Obviously, WBC have now suspended him. I get asked about Ryan Garcia every day, and it's, it's really none of my business. I told everyone before, the guy has imploded, he's out of control, he needs help. You know, then it was just, apparently it was just an act for the, the, the fight, which it would never was. And now people are starting to see it, and, you know, it's getting, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Until This is what happens with these things. They get worse and worse and worse, until something really terrible happens 
and everyone regrets not getting him help or not trying to get him help. The one, the one thing I will say, and I've seen what's happening to him, I've seen happen to other fighters before. It's not easy to get people help that actually think there's nothing wrong with them and think that actually everything's fine, I've got this, I'm, I'm under control. Do you know what I mean? I'm a little bit crazy, I do like a drink, but that's all right. Someone, like, you know, you heard his, you saw his mum and dad issue a statement, so look, hopefully someone, or him himself, can just jack it in and go, all right, I need to do something. But it's very hard, you know, but at least it looks like people are realising we've got to, otherwise, you saw yesterday, it was terrible. Today might be even worse. Then what happens? Something really bad happens. And we don't want that. Ryan's a good kid with a good heart. Let's get him well. We know he's got the year ban, but after that year, would it be irresponsible to let him fight for a promoter to put him on a show if he still carries on to continue down this road? To be honest, I think it was irresponsible to let him fight in the first fight. But, I mean, he didn't win because it was a no contest, but he performed pretty well. So it's hard. You know, you can't pull a fighter out of a fight contractually. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't just say to Ryan Garcia, I don't think you're well enough to fight. He goes, oh, are you joking? I've passed all my medicals. I'm absolutely fine. You can't do that. But people also want fighters to fight so they can make their money. But at the same time, at the moment, you know, he's got this, this one-year ban. What will happen in a year? May, he might not even fight again. Like, again, if something really bad happens... That's, that's the problem here. So let's nip it in the bud, get on top of it, and, and let him prepare for his comeback and, and get well. Do you think De La Hoya would let him fight? Yeah. yeah. Why? I just don't think they've got that kind of relationship. I, they, they, they don't care about each other. So if you don't care about someone, you're gonna, you, 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 you want your money. So... Spoke to you yesterday about Canelo slash Charlo Belanga reports yesterday afternoon, Eubank. Mm. It seems like every few months these rumours start to swirl around, but are we going to get Canelo Eubank? I mean, sounds like possibly. Um, look, I think a, a welterweight Conor Ben beats Chris Eubank, and obviously that's the fight we want to make, but if he lands that Canelo fight, good luck to him. I mean, I don't think it's a big fight in America. Um, I don't think he's earned that fight at 168, but, you know, for me, obviously I want to push the Edgar Belanga fight. He's mandatory. He's a big, strong super middleweight. He punches like a mule, and it's Mexico against Puerto Rico. I think it's a massive fight. PBC probably want to push the Charlo fight. He's been very inactive, but who knows? Anything's possible. Have you had discussions with Chris Eubanks since he's left Wasserman? Not him personally, but his team, yeah. Is there fight speed made from a matchroom side yeah, that doesn't involve Conor Ben? Uh, yes, but what we want to do is let him fight in October because he needs a warm-up and then fight Conor Ben in March next year when we know he'll be clear to fight. But it could be sooner, but, you know, like, we want to just set a date where we go 100% that fight can take place. So our plan would be, you know, when did Eubank last fight? November, a year ago? September. September, so nearly a year. So the last thing he wants to be doing is going into a fight with Canelo Alvarez at 168. But listen, if the money's wild, good luck to him. Um, but for me, it would be coming back with a fight and then fighting Conor Ben in the stadium. But look, he's, you know, he's going to have options and he'll decide what's best for his career. You want to be quiet on Conor Ben. Any really? updates? No, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah when, when go. things go quiet, it's a good sign. So they're working away. And, and uh, again, we just want that date in the diary where we can say 100% he can fight back in the UK. And that's what we're working towards. Two more quick ones. Have you discussed with AJ um, a retirement plan, like a roadmap for? Because he went on the Jonathan Ross show a couple of months ago and said he's only got two years yeah. left. No, great question, but no. 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 I mean, you know, I think the plan is we just keep going. Okay. And like at the moment, when you're flying like he is, you're not even thinking about retiring. You know, if there's a niggle or an injury or the performances start dipping, I guess you might say, right, I'm going to do two more or I'm going to do one more or whatever, but not even, you know, that's not even a, um, on the radar. Last one, tomorrow, can we uh, rally the boys up? Coach Hearn once again, what's going to happen, England, Switzerland? Look, I think that we've been really poor, haven't we? But we keep performing. And if we're winning, playing like we're playing, when we get it right, and it's a when, it's not an if, it's a when. 
when it comes together, we may be untouchable. So I wouldn't be surprised if we squeak by Switzerland 1-0 tomorrow, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we absolutely spandoola them 4-0 and look unbelievable. Imagine if we play Switzerland tomorrow and look sensational and win 4-0. Everyone will be like, we're going to do it. We're going to win the whole thing. We're going to the semis. But by any means necessary, we must win tomorrow. That's all that matters. What a weekend to be alive. Get up. Get up. Eddie Home, thank you very much. Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.